Greetings sailors, welcome back to World of Warships, I figured it was about time. I've actually, since the last time I played any cruisers, unlocked the next on the American line, the Cleveland, although I don't actually have any modules for it yet. I've also been playing my Saipan a bit, but it's slow going, mostly because I'm sticking with the fighters, and frankly, there is no real incentive to do so from the game itself, like you get a bit shafted in terms of Primarily XP, but you also get less credits for fielding fighters and taking down enemy planes. So although you're helping your team, the game isn't really rewarding you for helping your team. So that remains a problem with carriers. Like, it's funny, carriers are their own solution because you can shoot out uh, enemy planes out of the air. If you could shoot enemy um, artillery shells out of the air and will the tanks with your own artillery, I'm sure people would have a, a little bit less of a problem with it. Although, as a mechanic, of course, that would make absolutely no sense whatsoever. But uh, I really feel like carriers are in serious need of a, a, a fine tune because at the moment they just, they're all about torpedo bombers. And if you field anything else, you're pretty much screwing yourself in terms of getting more XP and credits. So yeah, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, they are at least going to buff dive bombers because the, the Saipan in particular, if you take two fighter squadrons, your third squadron is a dive bomber squadron. Dive bombers currently are pretty useless. I mean, if you're lucky, you might do a couple of thousand damage in a battle with a dive bomber squadron, but that's not going to be enough to get you any significant amount of XP. So, like, I've actually got a safe replay. I'm debating whether to use it or not, but 35 air kills and about 2,000 damage, and my score was terrible. Even though 35 air kills means that I was really helping out the team in terms of preventing enemy dive bombers going after, uh, enemy torpedo bombers going after our ships. But I just didn't get rewarded for that, so yeah. But this isn't about carriers at all. We are playing a Cleveland, and the Cleveland itself has got a pretty good anti-air capability. Although, like I mentioned, no modules upgraded for it yet. Although the guns are a bit weird on the Cleveland. You don't necessarily want to upgrade the guns, because although you get a faster rate of fire, the turn speed of the turrets becomes rather slower. So it's a bit of a... I'm not convinced it's a good trade-off. But there's also uh, an upgraded hull and an upgraded fire control, which I definitely do want to get as soon as I've got enough XP. So this is a tier 6 battle, and uh, we've got a war spite on our team. That's interesting. They've got two Fuzos, for pair of um, They've also got two Clevelands. Uh, it seems like they might have a slight um, advantage, to be honest. One more battleship. They've got a higher tier. They've got a Saipan. And it's not like we have massive... Well, we do have an Omaha, I suppose. I don't know. It's a bit hard to tell. Also, it's this game mode, which I really don't like. The three capture points. Yeah. Oh, well. It, we might still have a good game, even so. But I'm not particularly fond of this particular... Like, it just... It seems to go on points more often than it does with taking out one team or the other. And you can very easily get a team that just seems to ignore the fact that there are any capture points to begin with. And that can make life a little bit frustrating. It's a little hard to... It, this, is, this is a very team game. Like, you can't... The circumstances where you're going to be able to just dominate and utterly carry uh, a match on your own. Like, you can have a... a a bigger impact than you might do otherwise, certainly. Um, but there's a lot of RNG involved as well, like one lucky um, battleship hit against your cruiser or destroyer or whatever can basically ruin your day, so yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't be a, a wargaming game without a heavy dose of RNG, I suppose. I honestly can't see this ever being uh, uh, a, a team sport like um, like they've done with um, making wall of tanks, you know, uh, Our team is putting that into the uh, WGL and all that kind of thing. So um, it's, oh, Citadel hit with HE, interesting. I don't know, but it still has its, I, I'm, I'm now the initial first blush of, of Oh my god, it's so new and interesting. Well, now that's worn off a bit. I'm still enjoying this. 
I have to say. I, mean, I like the pace of it, but the teams can be just as bad as World of Tanks. And uh, it feels like it's just a little bit harder to really carry. Also, people are pointing out that I'm very bad at locking my turrets. I can never remember what the control, the, the hotkey is for doing that. It's like Control X or something, but it's it's a bit too... It feels a bit too faffy, to be honest. It's a pity I can't just like, right-click and do it kind of will the tank style and lock the turrets that way. So we spotted... Uh, that's a bunch of stuff here. We don't necessarily want to hang around. Uh, that's a carrier. Looks like a Saipan, maybe. I'm not going to go after that. That's a battleship that's about to... Oh, hello. Didn't need to do that. What is that? That's a Phoenix. That's the tier 5. Yeah, well, I'm actually going to come about and try and get away from this. This feels like a few too many enemy ships, and we don't have any battleship support. So I'm going to use my uh, maneuverability and GTFO. Out there should do the trick. So what's the rest of the team doing? It's a little hard to read, to be honest. Yeah, that Phoenix is not read which way the wind is going, as it were. Now, our destroyers should be relatively okay, because, of course, they're destroyers. Um, I can't take many hits, but... Oh, it'd be nice if I could back that uh, carrier. But that would involve getting a lot closer than I want to, considering there's a battleship around. Well, they've lost one battleship, though, but there's another one back there, and then there's one there. So I'm, I'm being a bit wary, like, I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to commit because I don't particularly have the armor. Although the guns on this are quite nice. And apparently, the the tier seven, the Pensacola, has it, it's basically made of tin cans. It has very, very little armor indeed. So <laughs> I'm not sure if that's going to feel like a big upgrade or not. But we'll see. Presumably, it gets better guns. All right, I might just be getting some range on that battleship. Well, I'm probably just going to, yes, whack the side of the hill instead. But it doesn't matter, I will be reloaded. What is that? A, a Quachi. So that's not a particularly high value, but he's still got big guns. It will still be nice to take him out. And that's also a destroyer up ahead somewhere. Well, there's islands between me and him, so that's not too much to worry about, really. To only 10 hits so far. But uh, I'm just I'm just kind of hanging loose at the moment. <laughs> I don't want to get stuck in it. It's a bit too early to read what's going on. The um, I, I do like like the, the flexibility of cruisers. It, it's not as extreme as the flexibility of destroyers, of course. But battleships, um, for the most part, once you're committed, you're committed. And it is... I mean, you get faster battleships, but it's more the 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 rate of fire issue and the 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 costliness of turning your turrets around if you have to turn your turrets around and change direction because um, it can put you uh, you can basically be unable to fire for quite significant periods of time. That guy's on fire. I should probably be firing H E at him actually. We'll queue up HE for the next salvo, if he's not dead by that point. Got a hit there. Oh. Let's reduce speed a bit. We should be able to take this guy out. One less destroyer. That's a tier 4, but even so, tier 4 torpedoes would still hurt. Right. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I just missed. I think he's about to get uh, torpedoed. There we go. So let's go back to AP. Let's see what's doing on the other side of the map, although I might just have shots at that Cleveland, the only Cleveland. Um, that may not have been quite far ahead enough given his range. No, it wasn't. Oh, if I just catch his tail though. Right, that's my shot. I'm not going to run aground. You definitely have to get into the habit of um, looking around. That sounded like a good series of hits. Just having quite strong situational awareness and I, I don't always. I'm just checking I'm not going to shoot the rock. So that there. Yep, that's over the rock. 
Oh, that's a battleship that's just coming into range. And it's a Fuso, so... I'm going to be a little bit careful of him, because that could be painful. Very, very painful indeed. But he's turning, so that's... Oh, right, that was way too far ahead, apparently. Uh, it's... Oh, someone's shooting at me. Where from? I don't know. That was a pair of hits, probably not significant. Um, if that squadron of fighters gets close enough. We seem relatively even so far in terms of numbers, but of course they have that cap points advantage. So either we need to start seriously sinking their ships in earnest or um, take back capture points. We did have a destroyer going for that guy, but I think he was just really low health. So let's start turning now. That other cruiser's about to come in range, although, to be honest, much more worried about this battleship. Um, have we lost? We've lost all but one of our battleships. In fact, one of our battleships has got a minus one next to his name, which is not really what one wants to see. He's pretty close. Can I just... Oh, uh, my one group of shots went over. That's fine. And is he about... Oh, he's going in front of the island. Never mind. So I'm actually going to start turning now. What is that? That's another Cleveland. Doesn't have much health. Oh, also, torpedo bombers. We're close enough. I'm never quite sure how close you have to be to get the the benefits of uh, the, uh, the, enemy is about to win. the the skill that lets you sort of put all firepower to your forward defences or whatever that quote from Star Wars was. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, yeah, no, we are just losing too many ships and they're getting points for that and we lose points for that and they've also got the cap point which is giving them more points so this is a bit of a runaway. It's very, like this is one of the reasons why I don't like this game mode, it's very very hard to come back from this kind of situation even though in terms of the actual numbers of ships in theory we could do it, once they have that points advantage it's like well how do you recover from that and most of the time you just can't. And I don't like any kind of game mode where it's just, it, it gets to a very very early on it just gets to a kind of a runaway situation where you just can't literally can't do anything about it to change it like if we destroyed this battleship right now it wouldn't give us enough points to really make a difference but I might at least farm a last bit of damage before the the uh, timer runs down on points because it's all you know XP and credits might even get a kill? Probably not. Oh, nice. Took out a turret. He's very close. I've actually got to watch out for his secondaries now. Let's slightly change course. Let's start trying to aim for a citadel hit. He is very, very close. Oh, just a couple more seconds and I could maybe have him, but no. There we are. We lost. Oh well. We'll do another one because this was a relatively short battle. Um, well, that's not bad credits for a loss. Obviously the XP wasn't particularly good. Um, score wise, top half of the team. Not bad. How you managed to get a minus one, I don't know. Detailed report, I'll have a quick look. 30,000 damage. Eh, it's okay. It's probably a bit on the low side for a, being a top tier cruiser, to be honest. Damage received, really not much. And credits cost, blah, blah, blah. It's a pity you can't look up the... Um, I'm sure it will come at some point, but the detailed results for the rest of the team. Like how much damage people did and that kind of thing. Because at the moment you can really only see kind of XP, kills, that kind of thing. So let's have another go. Let's hope we um, get... Or continue to get good matchmaking and let's hope we don't have that same ruddy map mode again because I really I don't like it I honestly don't I mean I know they they I mean I guess they're just trying to have variety but I really hope that like will of tanks where you have um, beyond the standard battles you also have encounter and um, 
uh, assault that they let you turn certain battle modes off because uh, uh, wow what they we, what that's a tier nine per team okay um this is not good matchmaking this is awful matchmaking <laughs> this is okay this is a really weird mix there's tier sixes uh better tier sevens uh they've got a sims okay tier seven destroyers this is tier six to tier nine i mean it matters a bit less because i'm still packing 152 mil guns and i'm still a relatively fast ship but I'm very, you know, I'm at the low end in terms of hit points here, so this could be quite painful. Here we go, just a standard battle. This is much more to my liking. So I might more, well, I'm going to be a lot more cautious in this one, I think. <laughs> oh, a tier 8 battleship will tear me a new one quite easily. Like, one salvo could probably just d obliterate me. And those tier 9 destroyers as well. Like, oh, okay. This, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be an experience. So, what's the rest of the team doing? I don't know whether to launch my uh, scout plane yet. There's also no carriers, which kind of, like, my strength possibly otherwise would be anti-air support and sticking near battleships and giving them air support. But... No carriers, so can't even do that really. So yeah, this is this is like range is going to be a a thing. Uh, that's a lot of hit points. Uh, yeah, which was the Nagata? The Nagata's the tier seven, and they've got Nimagi. Oh, I see. Okay, they've got a tier eight battleship, and we've only got okay. Well, we've each got a tier nine at least. Well. Fewer people playing at the moment, it's still the closed beta, although you can now just buy your way into it if you really want to. So, uh, yeah, the matchmaking is going to be a little fast and loose. As it was with World of Tanks in the old days. Although, they don't have much of an excuse these days in World of Tanks for, like... The player base that they've got, they really uh, could stand to, at least for the lower tiers. Like, a lot of people have... Well, I say a lot of people. A lot of people I know have expressed this opinion that um, plus one, minus one at the lower tiers would be a good thing. Because um, it is known for a fact that on the NA server they are actually really struggling to populate the lower tier battles because there just aren't enough people. And that's because... Oh, yes, you beauty, you ran aground. That's... Oh, Christmas. Um... People just, you know, new players, they're just not sticking with the game long enough because they get into their tier 3 tanks or whatever, and it's suddenly tier 5, then then they're like, just, well, screw this. Why would we stick around for this? And it's, I don't know, World of Tanks somehow, it's gone to the point where it has with that, but even so, they are at the point where they're having to try and offer incentives. Um, things like um, reward tanks for playing with, um, uh, you know, referring players, and um, if, if you've been inactive for a while, they'll send you an email saying, hey, come back and play World of Tanks, and you'll get such and such a thing as a freebie. So, they're at a stage where maybe the growth of new players has significantly slowed, and one way to get new players to stick around would be more limited matchmaking, but they seem particularly unwilling to do it, and it would really help on some servers. And they're kind of, they're trying to fudge it a bit by having, um, they're going to implement, and I don't know if it's actually in yet, but, oh nice, Cit Citadel hit there. Um, I have read that they're going to basically do, um, sort of, not quite skill based matchmaking, but matchmaking based on number of battles played, so that very new players will only get to play with very new players, so you won't have people with 10,000 battles rolling around in a T-18 and just farming win rate and whatever. They can still do that, but they will meet other 10,000 battle players with uh, T-18s and such like. So they're not... Um, like, people are going to have a chance to learn the ropes without being um, unduly um, picked on, farmed, however you want to say it, by people with a lot more experience and, you know, much better crews and actual equipment on their ship, uh, ships, <laughs> on their tanks. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm talking an awful lot about World of Tanks considering I'm playing World of Warships right now, but these are... I don't know, these are why I do these videos, it just kind of like... My mouth just runs and does whatever it does right. He's actually barely moving in the water, so I'm leading these shots way more than I have to. So that is a destroyer back there. Is he going backwards? I'm not sure what this guy's doing. That means I can at least try and maybe aim for Citadel hits. Oh, also, I'm firing HE still. Didn't know I was firing HE. Might set him on fire there. Which would be nice. And now he's moving again. Maybe he was just trying to throw off people's fire, but coming to a dead halt seems like not a good plan, especially to do that. What's his distance? Or what's his health, rather? So that's one of the Nagatos. He's moving a bit more now. So what's this? Uh, I don't know where is this destroyer? What are you doing, sir? 7 clicks. Oh, and we're being kept. Oh, I had not realised I'd run into a guy. Um, whoopsie! Okay, let's... Oh, turn to port, turn to port. Oh, yes, little destroyer, I see you. He's almost certainly trying to... I think I'm being team damaged in. I'm not sure that guy even realised that I'd run like a ground on him. But if I can... Oh, I am taking some damage here. Not a huge amount I can do about it, unfortunately. It's, uh... Well, I'm being focused by at least one battleship right now. Oh. I'm making effort to try and get back towards the cap. Right, if he holds true... Oh, he's turning. Well, that's the thing with trying to hit destroyers. Uh, oh, nice, though. I did get some hits. It's the... Uh, the longer the range, the more chance they just have to simply dodge the shots. Right, so... I'll try and head back to the cap, but I think we're actually losing this one to cap. I could go, nope, dear, I'm not playing a, paying attention to minimap, but then I wasn't either, to be honest. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, right. That is another destroyer down there. We've got two battleships going back, which is good. I do like one of the the, the kind of got a default remap feature really of this game in that um, you can automatically you can you, you can just see where your teammates are heading. You can also see where enemies are heading, and heading is a particularly important concept when you're in ships, of course. Knowing which direction people are pointed in. And then if you know which direction someone's pointed in and you know which direction their guns are pointed in, that gives you tactical information that could prove very useful indeed. So, 7.3 clicks, so let's try about there. It's fairly fast moving. No, it's not quite enough lead. Is he trying to go for the cap or is he just trying to distract us from getting back to the cap? I'm entirely sure. Right, do you just go in a straight line? No, still not enough lead. Uh, no, that was terrible. Quite wary of running into this battleship. Right, they're not capping anymore though. Our battleships are doing an okay job of that. I think we might be winning this. Oh, that was about the right sort of area, but just a bit ahead of him, I think. It's definitely harder to get ships when they're like when they're bow or stern on towards you, of course, they're a smaller target, and it's a little bit harder to lead, to be honest. That's not a terrible strategy, is turning directly towards somebody or away from them. Just make yourself a, uh, a very small target, indeed. Whereas, of course, going sideways in, uh, in, like al alongside their guns means you can just get broadsided, so, yeah. Right, 7.2 clicks, let's try there. <laughs> I, I think I've had like one series of hits on this guy. Oh, there we go. And I got the kill, nice right, let's go back to AP. That cruiser's about to pop into range. I think we've won this one actually. Our battleships did actually respond to these two guys here. They turned around, stopped them from capping, and I, yeah, I think we've got this, so that's pretty much GG. Right, that's an Ibuki, I have no idea what tier that is. 
I actually just hit tab. That is a tier 9. Okay then. So I'm slightly wary of his guns, but he is concentrating on other things right now. So let's just keep side on. Let's see if we can get the range. And that's their Fletcher. Oh yeah, this Ibuki's in trouble. Uh, will I get the kill? No. Right. That Fletcher's slightly out of range. He's got two battleships for backup, but these are the last three ships, so yeah. No, I don't have range for that. Well, I'm down to half health, but... 39 hits, one kill. Well, we'll see what that translates to in damage, of course. Because the first part of the battle I was spamming HE and not even realising it. I'm actually going to turn to starboard. Get my guns around that way while I close the range. Make sure I don't intersect and ram into this cruiser. I wonder if that's even the same cruiser as before. It might be. Oh, did we just lose a battleship? It'd be nice if uh, it would tell you... Well, it just tells you names at the moment. If you can't remember necessarily... Who's uh, who's in what? Then uh, it can be a little bit okay. So he's putting down a screen for his allies. Right, um, he's uh, reasonably hurt. Let's see the other one. Like, yeah, they're both reasonably hurt. But that Fletch running around with torpedoes might still pose a serious threat. Right, we did just lose a battleship there, I'm sure of it. We've also got a cruiser going for their cap, which is probably sensible, although their Fletcher may well be able to actually go back and defend this. He absolutely has to. Right. Oh, that's coming for me. That's... Alter course. I also want to be careful about that Fletcher popping out unexpectedly. There we go. So these are longer range shots for them, which means I've got a much better chance to dodge, but... Whoa, that could hurt! Ooh, okay. I really have to be careful. I, I want to get within range of them, but that means that they're well within range of... of uh, um, you know, of their guns, so that's, that's potentially a bit bad for me, so... Oh! Lots of altering uh, trajectory and whatever. Alright, so let's turn around. I really don't know where this Fletcher's gone, actually. It's worrying me now, to be honest. Oh, I think I'm going to have to disengage. I can't. This is absolute max range for me, and they're comfortably able to hit me. So, right, let's get my plane back in the air, because it might spot that Fletcher. Turn around. How's our battleship doing? Oh, wow, Fuso's got loads of health. Okay, so I've kept... One upside of them shooting at me is that our Fuso and um, this Nagato, they will have been absolutely... They will have had free reign to shoot back at them. Because um, these guys will have had their guns completely on me. And this, this Fuso, enemy Fuso, still got his guns on me, so... Um, I've got a much better chance of dodging those shots than the enemy. I suspect their flesh has gone back to defend by... Oh, no, no, there's torpedoes, okay. Okay, the Fletcher's still around there somewhere then. And he'll be the one that's spotting me for them. So, yeah, we're probably going to cap before we kill these. Oh, one's dead. Okay, good, good. But we're still probably going to cap before we kill them. Like, trying to chase down that Fletcher will be a dangerous business, so... I think capping might actually be the right thing to do in this scenario, to be honest. Right, so he should be concentrating on battleships. And no, no, he's still firing at me. Okay. Well, it's nice to know I have fans, I suppose. And, oh, enemy. Well, I'm in the cap circle, so is this Fletcher, and I can't see him. That's how good Fletcher camo is. And I've got a freaking scout plane in the air. This is slightly worrying. This is how good the camo on the Fletcher is, apparently. It might be that's why I'm taking fire from this battleship, because maybe nothing else is spotted right now. But, like I said, I've got a much better chance of dodging at very gears, you sneakers, and so and so. I've got a much, much better chance of dodging than either of the battleships do, so... Oh, that's a lot of torpedoes. So the Fletcher can fire a few torpedoes, it seems like. Well, that wouldn't be nearly enough for me, but uh, give him something to think about, at least. 
Whoa. Oh, sneaky little destroyer person here. There we go, we won. And I lived! I lived to tell the tale! Oh, that was a bit exciting at the end there. Um, I think that must have been a much better result damage-wise. How did I do on the team? Not that high up, actually, to be honest. But we had some people with very, very good scores indeed. Like that Nagato there. Mr. Shockwave with all the underscores. Over 2k experience. Uh, the other Nagato had 1800, 1600. So the battleships were definitely pulling their weight, which is always good to see. Uh, quick look at the report. No, that was rubbish. That was absolutely rubbish. The last game was 30,000 damage. This was, I think, about 15,000 damage. Not even that. Um, God, that's like 13,000 maybe. So that was a bit pants, to be honest, but I got more money out of it. So. <laughs> and I was still alive at the end there, and I was dodging all those shells from that battleship and dodging all the torpedoes, which meant they weren't going after our battleship, so... I feel like I was still contributing a bit, even though I didn't get that great of a score out of it. But anyway, I should have enough XP to buy the hull upgrade, so I'll do that, and then we will wrap up this video, I think. I'll just wait for the... It does take a long time to load the garage back in, and I don't know why. Any time today. Any time you feel like it, World of Warships. Any time at all. There we go. So, we'll get the Cleveland 1945 and research that. And we'll also, yes, and mount that. And visually, it doesn't look that different, I don't think, but more hit points. Um, I think I get more anti aircraft and maybe a bit more armor. I'm not sure it is more armor, actually. Probably not more armor. But anyway, more hit points is good. And more anti-aircraft mounts uh, is definitely good. So, yeah, there we go. That was the Cleveland. Um, I like the cruisers. I'm maybe, like, my results are incredibly variable with the cruisers. But not as much so as with the, uh, the battleships. And, uh, well, I, I already went on for about five minutes at the, the start of the, the video about carriers. So let's, let's not go back into that <laughs> So anyway, if you like this video, you can leave any comments below, you can hit the like button, you can subscribe to my channel, and as always, stay tuned for more.